Hey, Coco, what's going on, girl? You know what? I know you haven't done it in a minute. Do what, Chad? You know this is a uh, TV, uh, Chad. Yeah, PG-13. This is TV, yeah. This is PG-13, yeah. What? No. The point <laughs> is, you haven't done it in a while, and it needs to be done. So, are you ready for it? What, Chad, come on. Now. Are you ready? See, now you're being extra. Yes, I am. But are you ready? Okay. All right. Oof. But you make a phone call, and hopefully... The phone call will get through because AT and T had a day to day. I know that AT and T was AT and T. This is an AT and T phone, but you know what? What? I know who to call. Who you gonna call? Hold on, Ghostbusters. Let me see. Take my joke. Oh, you gotta take my joke. Oh, you gotta. Shh. You need to hear no in the background. That's a lot of dang old numbers you dialing. Pam. That was international call. I think I need this guy's number. Um, yeah, this is Peter. Uh, Mr. Peter, can I speak to Brennan Daddy? Hey, Brennan. I'm just... But I... <sighs> okay, this me, yeah. Um, listen, yeah, you already know who this is, but, uh, I just really, truly... <clears throat> I... <clears throat> I don't like your tone, but listen. Don't be telling that. But you know you talking to. Me? All I'm just trying to say is that your son is out there in them streets of the uh being a, a singer, and he know he married. Now you need to get him. All right, we gotta go, Jack. He on his way over here. I didn't think you was gonna call him. I thought you was gonna call Old Lion. We gotta go into. You better come on. We gotta go into the witness protection program now because she made that phone call to Brendan Dad. So if y'all don't see us, y'all know why. Deuces. <laughs> oh man, I'm too old to be trying to get. We keep it real. What's going on, Koya Ken folks? Welcome back to another video of Courtney and Eddie. Yes, we are a day late because of my job, but we are here. Tonight, it's me and Courtney, and I don't know why I'm rambling, but anyway, my name's E-Dub, <laughs> a.k.a. Eddie, a.k.a. E-Dub. It's my little wife right here. What's your, what's your name? Courtney, also known as Courtney. And this right here is Courtney and Eddie. This channel's all about relationship, reviews, entertainment. It's all about famous rants and jokes. Tonight, we're going to be talking about, once again... Mary at first sight. So if you're brand new to this wow. shiny hair, I don't know. <laughs> and you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. And don't forget, y'all, we got a new collection. It's gonna be um, affirmations on coedwear.com. And one of the shirts that um the merch, dang it, the merch is Jesus. <laughs> See what Jesus to do? They knock stuff over. Jesus. It knocked up over his own. I think that Brendan did it. But anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> so um it's called genius so y'all make sure that y'all go and purchase it it comes in a sweatshirt or it comes in a tee all different colors i mean they're they're nice and like i said it before but i don't brag about our quality of t-shirts that much but um yeah it, it the people speak for themselves so yeah these are really nice qualities nice sweatshirts nice t-shirts they don't shrink much if they do shrink at all. Um, and, you know, it's just good quality. They don't bleed and all that stuff. So, y'all, let yeah. me tell you something. I sent my mama some, and she mm. loved it, yeah. Buy one for your family members. Yeah, you get them. Good quality. They don't shrink. And, you know, they're fashionable, too. You know what I'm saying? You can wear them to the club. You can wear them to the old folks' home. Uh, you can wear them to a Walmart uh, and Target. You know, so, yeah, buy you one. Yeah. Buy some. All right, but not this one here because this is not one of our shirts. This is the one. This is my affirmation right here. Well, then why are you bragging uh, about it? Roll it up. Put your mic back on. Uh, they don't need to see it. Yeah. It come from Walmart. Uh, uh, I didn't say it come from Walmart. No, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it. Come on, shop at Walmart. <laughs> no, you don't. Know. I don't know. believe it. All right, you guys. So let's just go ahead and get into it. So this is going to video. That right there is probably the most that y'all get because this video is going to be very short. Um. 
So Chloe and Michael, y'all know this probably gonna be the power couple for the whole season, and they seven days in, honey, and that's how much we think that they is the power couple because the rest of them is uh yeah. Chloe said that um she wanted to go home, so she wanted to go home and be with her dogs. You know, she's an introvert, he an extrovert, and she just needs some time to herself to woosa, as they say. So yeah, he was like, mm, okay, uh, he, he didn't seem to be very um cheerful about her doing that because y'all know as the experts always say you know it ain't good to go home because then basically you may not come back like mentally you may not come back so yeah yeah you know plus you know, oh like i said i understand where chloe is coming from i'm an uh introvert you know what i'm saying i can just do people that's why this shirt right here speaks to me i can just do people for just so long you know so long so you just you know your energy runs out. So you need to go get to yourself, be by yourself, so you can recharge. And you know, and hopefully when they get to the house, the permanent home, they have a big enough house that she can go downstairs or upstairs in a certain uh, in a separate room. And that's what I do and recharge. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Instead of going all the way home and be separated like that. Right. So hopefully they can get a bigger house to do that. And you know, that's what introverts do. Yeah. People say, well, if she was an introvert, she shouldn't have signed up for the show. I agree. I get it. I agree <laughs> with that. But hey, it is what it is. So now with the rest of the raggedy couples, um, Not you raggedy. got yes, because they relationships is good and regular. So with the rest of the regular couples, they on day twelve of decision day. So decision day is gonna come for them quicker than Chloe and Michael, because you know, they lagging behind. So Becca is basically, um, you know, got her little camera phone and she's just telling us that, you know, she crying and stuff like that because she said that Austin was mean to her. He mums under his breath and stuff like that. So, you know, uh, but anyway, so on the next one, they got Pascal and uh, little two pint. What's her name? Dr. Pepper, little, little, bit, little bit walking little bit. in. Yeah, good. And y'all know we had not seen them this whole season, child. They even got scared, like. They about to have decision day, and we ain't hardly seen them that much, you know. So they know they know this whole season is a disaster. They yeah. don't want their fingerprints on it, oh, but it is on it. Yeah. So Becca said that um she feels like their communication is off, and um and basically neither one of them feel heard. She also feels as though that you know she has been holding back. She hadn't been to, now. She's saying I'll listen tears. She don't. She has been holding back, and she has not been expressing the way she really and truly feels and now she had a tipping point where now she is just bubbling over so now she's crying she's emotional and all that stuff whatever and um uh, and she explained what happened it seems as though when they was at the wolf um the little wolf center whatever it was last episode that she was she had bought some stuff or whatever trinkets and she was trying to put it in the bag and i think that <clears throat> what's his name austin I think he started mumbling under his breath and he was saying that she basically be micromanaging, you know, I guess every little step or every little bit he do. And he feels like she's controlling. And so now he was mumbling under his breath and saying something. She felt that it was embarrassing because even the, the people that was at the, the Wolf Center heard him, you know, and stuff like that. So, you know, she said she feels rejected <laughs> too, because I think Dr. Pepper was saying that sometimes when a woman don't feel love like you know sexually and don't feel like you're attracted to her stuff like that she feels rejected so it seems as though becca is in this emotional spiral because her husband don't is not attracted to her he don't want her she don't feel wanted she just feels rejected and austin chad but go here baby yeah i kind of understand where becca coming from when you don't feel wanted or need it yeah it can do something to your psyche Mm -hmm. But this one thing I can say about this show as a whole, this show is supposed to be an uh, experiment, right? Let's, let's keep it real. To me personally, the experiment failed. Oh, yeah. yeah it, it, no, this experiment failed. What I'm saying is that you have to get to know a person before you marry a person. You got to know the ins and the outs, the pros and the cons, the goods and the bads. And trying to marry somebody unseen and somebody trying to, you know, looking at paperwork and trying to look at the data and match it together, it doesn't work. Because you got to feed off somebody's energy, right. their personality. Right. And, you know, out of this experiment they had, what, it was like season what? A bunch. Okay, a bunch of seasons. You, out of all these seasons, you might have, let's say, 10 to 15 couples that are still together. 
And, you know, you probably had like 90 or 100 couples. So the percentage of this experiment is very, 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 very it's low. Very low. Yeah. So, you know, that's my take on it, man. I mean, that's a good, good, I mean, good take on it because, yeah, it is like, now, and some have made it. We can speak of those that are still married to this day and they ain't faking it for the cameras. Right. They actually still married and enjoying life. Right. But, you know, it's, it, it is off of not only are you taking, you know, paper and matching it together, you taking people's word of how they say that they are. But then when you mix this person with this person, then it could just, it could truly, collide so you know uh right. yeah you and know, everybody don't be honest on that paper right it's, like i said they always say oh man it looks good on paper it looks good on paper <laughs> it may look good on paper but it don't look good in real life mm -hmm. you know so yeah you you got to take all that consideration man but yeah i just think this experiment sometimes it could be entertaining like the chris and Pace situation or uh, and sometimes it'll be a dud like this season right. so you know total hey, dud. Yeah. um becca also said that too that austin is one way on camera and one way off camera so once again like you said faking in front of the yeah. camera you know what i'm saying she said that austin mm. is um like you know when he's on camera he's you know he light candles he touch it da, da, da. when he off camera you know i guess she don't get that same energy from him and she's trying to get him to open up and stuff like that and just to look at it from their side I can imagine that you want a break from performing, so to speak, because when you on camera, production is pretty much feeding you, okay, now we're going to do this exercise. We're going to do this. Now go over there. Y'all need to have this right. conversation. So it becomes a whole production. Right. So when you're not filming, I'm sure it's just like, oh, child. You know, you want to yeah. just relax. So basically what you're saying, not all, but some of these people that's, that's on this show, <clears throat> What you see on camera is not their real selves. They put on a, a, a show. They put on a performance. So you're not seeing the real person. So you think Austin, I'm, I'm thinking Austin was a good dude because that's what they're showing us right. on, on, on television. But between the scenes, like Brendan, between the, between the scenes, they don't want to look bad. Right. So you know they try to put on, put on this good act on camera. But behind the scenes, they, they mean, they suck. They just, they just don't. Well, they just disconnected. You yeah. know, and and it could I'm be. About to say that until you once again dive in. Well, you, you know, know we just won. like my mama. We won. You know, you know, don't bring your mama to this. Yeah, I can't try to talk to somebody. Oh, yeah. can't look. Uh, they try to say something. And keep going. I try. Move it. Yeah. Too slow. What they did is when you do like that, too slow. So, um, one thing too that she was saying is when they got ready to go to that big room, you know, we took did the liners and he took his little cover and walked mm, away to the big room. Yeah, um, she was she brought that up and stuff like that. And like he said, I think he said it on the um after party. You know, it was a celebrity room. He wanted to go in there. She said, but he didn't really invite her to go in there. And plus, they were supposed to be intimate because he talked about oh we're gonna be intimate and stuff, but he was too drunk to even do anything. She said. <laughs> that um that he apologized for that but she said after the one of the producers told him to apologize you know what every time austin supposed to be trying to get it on with becca he had some kind of excuse you know yeah. it was his allergies with the cats one time now he was too drunk you know he's like bro just just keep it 100 put it on the table and just tell becca i'm not attracted to you Mm -hmm. Just keep it moving. Mm -hmm. Don't be stringing her along. You know what I'm saying? So you tell her you're not attracted to her, and she'll know that when the decision day comes, y'all gonna go y'all separate ways. So now she knows, so she's not gonna be as invested into you now. So she can kind of break. She can kind of break free from her trying to like you know get to know you and trying to be with you because, bro, you can't come up with all these excuses every time you're trying to get it on with your wife. All right. Oh um, God, but yeah. somebody made a good point. They said if this was the rose would was reversed, would we be still giving Becca all of that? Uh, when you gonna do it? When you gonna do it? When you gonna do it? If if it was the man pressuring the woman, yeah, that's a good point. And I would say in that case, it's double standards. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's point. double standard because most of men are eager. Heck, they'll do it with somebody they just met five minutes, so they most of the time are eager to do it quicker than a woman. You know, I agree, but there's some women out there they don't mind. Now they don't mind. They don't mind getting it on the first date. You, you know, you what I'm saying? blink and they yeah. done already dropped it. Yeah, that's ooh, you know. So 
But yeah, uh, but yeah, that's, you know, that's the way society is. It is double standards, and, you know. And I, you know, I hate it. It's been like that for centuries. Uh, you know, what you can do? You know, what can you do? You know, I understand people say let's break the law and try to like keep you know everything as equal, but let's keep it real. It's embedded yeah. in our subconscious. You know, so that. you're so smart. I was gonna <laughs> say that. You need one of these. Oh, nah, so I don't smart. need to tell people I'm a genius because I know they know I'm a genius. You know that they know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they do. Yeah. That's why they be coming after me they in the comments. They say people. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so let's move on. So Chloe is talking to her friends. <laughs> and, well, her friends, sorry. You know, they going to um, lunch, whatever. And so um, basically she's saying that, you know, she's telling him, you know, she had some me time and, you know, she more rejuvenated, she recharged and stuff like that. She just kind of needed to, you know, regroup and really think about if Michael is the man that she wants to be with, like just kind of put everything in, in perspective and focus and stuff. And so now she feels good about, you know, going back and really starting this marriage afresh and anew. And so the friend was saying that, you know, um, <clears throat> Or do you have any kind of concerns about anything? Because, you know, how Michael dressed, you know, he may be a lot for her and stuff like that. So she said that she okay with it, you know, but, you know, time will tell. So Emily and Brandon, you know, she got her stitches out. Yay. And they seem to be like happily, happy, happy chat. But we'll continue. That's crazy. Uh, so you telling me for them to get to this level of, you know, being okay with with one with one another that she almost had to die to get to that part yeah to get the tree right there yeah she got the tree man i am group said <laughs> hey right I am who group. said i am group what is that you remember the marvel show the marvel movie they got the talking tree uh, i am group i am group mm -mm. so i am group lay your hands <laughs> i hate funny it's not uh -huh. it's not funny it's not funny but yeah but yeah, uh, so it takes the a near death experience for Brandon to kind of open up to uh, to you know what I'm saying. It's crazy that she she almost died for this man to be okay. I can accept you for who you are. I don't know if he that. I or... know he's not. Okay, I'm, I'm being facetious when okay, I say okay, that. Gotcha. I know he's not that. He's, right. he's just. He just put on a roll yeah. right now. He's faking the funk right now. And then now. he probably just do feel sorry for her. He may be a person that could take care of you, but because he probably got some care for her, but he ain't yeah. nobody that's going to like find you, you know, well, attract reason, you as a wife. He yeah. Take care of you as a friend. And the reason why I say that because in, uh, what's the name? Emily. Yeah. In Emily's head, that's what she think. Oh, yeah. we on a good, we on a good page now. We, we on the same page. We good now. And Emily said, that's why I said what I said. It takes her to almost to die to get to this part. Right. But that's in her head. But now, Brenda, you know, like I said, he'll take care of her and be cool, cool with her and be nice to her. But, you know, that man, that man being long, he, he's long gone. Oh, yeah. He's because I think what he don't want to do, he want to go and get the decision day with no trouble. He don't want to fuss. He don't want to fight. He don't want to try to make it work. He don't want to try to be friends. Let's just be cordial. Be nice. I take care of you. Uh, whatever, and yeah. let's just make it to decision day. We ain't got to do all that. But I thought he was still in the apartment, but he was sleeping in a separate room. That's now, what I somebody thought. in the comments did bring that point up, but yeah, he's he's yeah, Brenda don't even stay there yeah, because man. the way he was sweeping around that house and stuff. And she was like, I appreciate you doing this for me, yeah. you know, cleaning up for me. So I said, Oh, yeah, she don't stay there. Yeah, I mean, don't he don't stay there. Yeah, I thought they stayed together, but he was sleeping in a separate room. That's what he said. I, I, oh, tell me when he first came. Yeah, in. that's what he yeah, said. He said, "I'm somehow, gonna sleep in this room. You sleep in that room." I think it was temporary. Somehow he then slipped out of there and he, he went back they, to the they, house. They didn't show that part. Yeah, though. that's why he gonna have yeah, uh, be they, out in them streets, honey. Because yeah, yeah, they didn't show that. Because Emily, she don't know what he doing. But no. if he was there, she yeah. would know if he was leaving out and stuff like that. For somebody to come back and tell you that your husband in them streets, oh yeah. Um. <laughs> so let's talk about that. Yeah, Brennan. You know. Um. <clears throat> he been <clears throat> helping her out, sweeping, you know, it just seemed like, you know, they eating spaghetti and she was like, oh, I'm so glad we're in a better place. And, you know, 
But in my mind, I know that Brennan is not like, oh, you my wife. I'm loving on you. Yeah. I'm finding you attracting them. No, he's just doing it for free. He felt sorry for you because Chad, you had the blood all in your hair. So, yeah, he's just kind of trying to <clears throat> nurse you back to health. But that's it for him. But um, Austin and um, Becca are in the hot tub, you know, talking and trying to get to a better place of trust and all that stuff, whatever. But I was just noticing that microphone on the back and seeing what you're going to get in that water. Is it waterproof? That's what I want to know. I didn't care nothing about the conversation because the same old, same old. Um, <clears throat> so let's move on. Chloe and Michael are having a 90s party. So y'all know they behind and doing everything that the other couples done already did. So um, she said that she feels recharged and uh, and just their conversation and how they just kind of flirt with each other sexually. Do y'all think they done had sex? Yeah, I think so. You think so? Yeah, I think so. Because she, uh, when he, like when they did the American Ninja and he was taking the, the tub, he was in the tub taking that bath right. to, to kind of like, you know, kind of kind of soothe his body because he, he was sore. The way she was looking at him, that was a look of lust. You know mm. what I'm saying? So, and I think they attract, they are attracted to one another. You Sexual. know what I'm saying? Sexual and just attracted to one another, period. So, yeah, I think they probably done it. Yeah, um, yeah, because he was on later on when he did the kickbox, he was talking about rolling his hips, you know, like, and she was like, mm. So it's just they they flirtatious that kind of goes now a little beyond of just having been intimate in that area. It just kind of like you know, you know what it is. I'm gonna get this tonight. And what's crazy? What's crazy about that? They are probably the only couple that have done it. Had to have that's been intimate. Dang, you're right. You're God, right. You know, Cameron, it's he, been a dry episode. Yeah, no wonder everybody's yeah, sexually frustrated. Yeah, sexually frustrated because <laughs> nobody got it going on. Nobody got it going on. Nobody has been intimate. Nobody knocked boots. Nobody. Uh, Becca, you know, you see, you know that situation. She crying because yeah. she can't do it. Uh, Cameron, he's in the hospital, so he can't do it because he he's hard. Yeah, he he now. Oh, but he definitely can't do it. Yeah, his heart. Yeah, he can't if do you it. Think about something. Yeah. His heart go up. He can't do oh, it. Oh Lord. You know, Orion, Orion, Lord, they ain't doing anything. So they wanted. To. Well, she did. And Brendan and uh, he doing it just ain't with his wife. Yeah, because I guess like somebody said, when he found out she was doing one night stands and stuff, it kind of turned them off. So he ain't doing it. What he doing? Well, here's what it is. But yeah. So yeah, man. So nobody this nobody. season other than Michael and Chloe that not the naughties. That's why they that's not why they the happy. Not the what? Not the naughties. Knocking naughty bits. That's what I'm gonna say. Knocking naughty bits. I never heard of that. Oh yeah. See, that's in the in the married culture right there. Keep it over there. So, um, so let's see. <laughs> so, Mike and Chloe, they, um, of course, they invite their friends to their nine party and everything. And basically, you know, they, um, chopping it up, but they also, you know, they have to whisk each other away and talk to the friends. So, as far as <clears throat> Chloe talking to Michael, friends, she was just saying, Can y'all give me any kind of pointers? But it seemed like Michael is a pleaser, pleaser person, is a people pleaser, like Chloe is a people pleaser. And his friends, excuse me, his friends was just saying that <clears throat> Michael's the type of person that likes to de-escalate things and put himself on the back burner and put other, yeah, like I was saying, the camera went off. But yeah, Michael would be more um, concerned about you than he is about himself. So, you know, that's the friends was just basically telling her, <clears throat> make sure that you tend to him and, you know, make sure that don't happen. So yeah, that's basically what that, that, that conversation was about. So... <clears throat> Let's see. So Claire is talking to her mama. Hey, her mama ain't do nothing to me, so let me keep my thoughts to myself. So um, Claire said that um, basically that Cameron don't want her to support. Like, you know, Cameron want her to stay over there, you know, but she wants to be supportive. Um, you know, she wants to talk to him, but, you know, Cameron just pretty much like kind of ha handle things himself. Um, but um cameron talking to brennan and as they having a conversation he's just talking about him being in the hospital and you know how he really truly has to um watch his heart and i don't know what it is but y'all you know, when he talk about claire i don't know did i say claire the first time i think so but when he talk about claire he was just saying his heart like he had to look at you know the the, the iphone 
that what they call the Apple, watch. The, the yeah, the Apple watch. watch. He's saying that you know he his heart started getting up and getting up, and you know it still can't go over a certain amount of beats, right? And so he Brendan had to tell him take your time because he like he had to calm down, and so you know, but he like if Claire he feels that you know that Claire just kind of like she ain't. 100 with her emotion like she have them over here she have them over there and he just don't know which way to go but he did say that if claire say that say that she want to stay together on decision that he already he gonna say the same thing why i don't know that why would you do that why would put your health at risk to be with somebody that every time you get around that person your heart rate goes up and you know and land, land you back into the hospital i don't understand that man you know you need your health you need your peace if you're not gonna get peace man if she's not gonna bring you peace, yeah, you gotta walk away from that, man. And that, don't, that don't make sense to me. It don't make sense to me either. Um, that don't because, make any sense. Because maybe I don't know. But Claire's just said, you know, she feels husband and wife is not their title. No, of course it's not. So yeah, um, she says she loves him as a, as a person, but she don't feel like that husband and wife for them. So I'm saying, girl, why is you in front of our cameras? Why is you still there at the apartment? Won't you just say we're getting a divorce? I ain't never seen them no separation. Where does put, new stuff come from? I put it this way. Married first sight people, you don't have to worry about keeping us in, in suspense. Because we know who's going to make it and who's not going to make it. I know that's right. So you don't have to drag this out to keep us in suspense. Like, ooh. Are they gonna say yes or no? We know they all gonna say no. The only person that might keep up keep us on edge a little bit is Chloe and Michael. Yeah. Everybody else, we know they're gonna say no. Yeah. Now if all of them end up saying yes or some crazy like that, then we know that it's an inside job and they y'all paying them some or do something because none of this, all of it is trash. All of it is straight yeah. trash. I mean, you come get waste protection, waste management, whatever you got. I mean, it's straight trash. So we know that. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, we won't see nobody. So ain't no suspense. Ain't got to do none of that. All like right. you said, we already know. But um, I wasn't finished, but okay. You what? No, I wasn't. Go uh, ahead, baby. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, you know, so like you said, you know, we know this, and to me, if they, if, they, if any one of those couples say yes on decision day, then after decision day, and you come back to the reunion, or we ain't together no more, at the reunion, it's going to hurt the image of the show. It's going to hurt the image of the show, because we come to this show to watch love. It's some drama, don't get right. us wrong, but if it's going to be scripted like that, that even though we see all this stuff on TV, that okay, yeah, they most definitely gonna get a divorce. And they say yes on decision day, then turn around at, re at the reunion, they ain't together no more. We know it's scripted, man. They did right. it for the money. They did it for the money. Yeah. And it's gonna hurt the the the, the prestige of this show. It was, the prestige of this show has been going down this season, to be honest with you. I don't know, y'all change production companies or, or what, man. Going. Um. So anyway, um. So Micah <laughs> and Chloe are doing boxing, you know, kickboxing and stuff like that. It's cute. Now, again, do it. Kickboxing. Yeah, I would do it. But again, but I think he, he was more boxing. Mm -hmm. Micah be trying to show y'all. Now, let me tell you something. If he's saying if it don't work with Chloe, it's gonna work with some of y'all ladies out there in the audience because we didn't see him ninja worn. We didn't see ninja worn, and we didn't see him boxing. And well, he was like, buh, 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 you can buh, buh, tell buh, buh, buh. Michael works out. Yeah, you can tell. And he acting. Yeah, he's real lean. You know, you really don't see a lot of body fat on him. And I saw in his apartment he had boxing gloves. So either he did kickboxing before, or he he been boxing before. Yeah, he got a he got a trainer. Yeah, he got a boxing yeah. stuff. So yeah, and it turns Chloe on Chad. So um, but yeah, yeah. I, I would like to box Michael one on one. You know, because they I should have been a boxer man back in the day. Back. In the day, is the <laughs> they did. Back they in did. the day, is the I know, but don't try to do yeah, it now. Man, I need it. you on this side. It, you could have been a welterweight or a lightweight boxer, man. Yeah, I, I, say, I had skills, man. Could have been. Yeah. I had the skills. <laughs> See, we know all these <laughs> words that are past it. I could have been. I had the skills. Yeah. Don't try to put no gloves on you now. Unless you're going to check your cheese, doing that little thing. Poom, poom. Poom, but yeah, do not. What little thing? The little thing go poom, poom, poom. I never heard that poom, poom, poom. <laughs> never heard of poom, poom, poom. He go poom. He 
you know when that new when that that thing be whack a mole, whack a mole. I think they had gloves or something. They don't have no gloves. They have like some have gloves. Hammer. Some be having go poom poom poom. Alright, poom poom poom. Go ahead. <laughs> so um so yeah, she is pleased. Uh, um, and she kind of brought up the people pleasing thing or whatever. And he was like, you know, I do know kind of like when to stop it, you know what I'm saying? And I, I'm not going to put myself on the back burner and just kind of, you know, deplete myself. So anyway, the experts are FaceTime Emily and Brandy hunting because, and they just trying to keep up or trying they want to know, you know, how she doing because of the accident and stuff like that. So she's smiling and grinning and, you know, Brandy got that crazy, you know, you don't know if it's really, he's smiling or he just. You know, but anyway, so he up there and um, basically, you know, they asked her how when and she was just saying, you know, it was a scary time for her. But, you know, it's kind of brought them closer. It's brought them to a place where, you know, they're caught where she said cordial, where they're getting along and they happy and stuff like that or whatever. And, you know, he did it like that and she did him like that. And it just seemed like, OK, but I still knew it wasn't no chemistry be between them, child. It wasn't like they was up there like this. They still had so much air, child, between them. You can put a little. A little person between Of course, they're going to have air between them because Brenda's staying at home. She's staying in the apartment. They separated. Of course, there's going to be something between them. Nothing. You know, because Brenda's out there living his best life. Living my best life. So, yeah, man. He's living that single life. It's, you know, it's already in his head that, you know, he's going to be solo when it comes to a decision day. Baby, he can't wait. I don't care nothing about you. Cut me off all the time. No, since you had to say. I'm done. God, I ain't gonna cut me off. And then you wanna be like a two year old. Well, time. you better start her, but say something. You, you know, know I had to take my time. And when you took and your time to get my words out. And I let you Oops. and I See, let See right you. now, I'm trying to talk and hold a conversation with you. A conversation is two ways. I speak, you listen. You speak, I listen, okay? Yeah, I'll write Jeez. that down on this mall. What happened to the core, man? The core of them. What happened to it? Producers, what's going on here? You know what I'm saying? Why do you put me with somebody that don't have any respect for their, for their fellow man? All I'm trying to do is hold a conversation, but she keep cutting me off. She get long-winded. And when I say something, she cut me off again. And you should, well, you should speak up. You need to be, be faster. I can't go fast because I'm trying to pronunciate my words correctly. But no, once I pause for one millisecond, she jumps in. <laughs> so, yes. I don't do that. <laughs> in my head, you do. <laughs> well, I thought that you was finished. No. But do you know how many times you done cut I me off? I cut you off. And then, and on y'all, 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 that's right, y'all bitter women. Yeah, you do. You cut off all the time. You know, cracking y'all voice. That's how y'all be saying. <laughs> yes, because y'all be saying, Eddie, shut up and let Courtney speak. You keep cutting up. Thank First you. of all, you don't speak to a man like that. You don't tell a man to shut up, okay? You never speak to a man like that. You never speak to a man like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's move on but that was pretty much it you know what i'm saying they were just saying you know blah 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 but we're gonna see next week child where emily gonna be crying but on the after party y'all she ain't come with all this aggression like she did before and they keep it bringing her on after party because i guess the rest of them said they not keep coming back there you know what i'm saying so emily said i do it i do it i do it so she on there every time just like she a, a, a regular person just like keisha but she was saying because uh, becca was on there and you know becca and emily take up for each other so y'all know she be having that smoke for um what's his name um austin when he on there because she gonna take up for uh becca becca said that you know she really feels sorry for you know emily because the times where brennan was such a hero taking care of her taking care of her he he was looking for another car like you know car shopping and he made her drive around you know why he looked for his car and stuff like that so she was just like you know that's sucks you know that's not something he should be doing he should be doing all the driving and stuff like that but oh gullible emily she do it child. i told you the man should be driving all the time i told you that no more road yeah that's because <laughs> i'm supposed to be driving 
Yeah. Okay, you can drive 12 hours, 13, 15, don't come Now I'm tired. Now. No, you no, relieve. no, you got to do it. No. Oh, I don't have to relieve yeah, you. Yeah, you do. Why? Yeah, you the man. You, you, that, you, you take care of you, Superman. No, if not, you're going to get a hotel. We're going to rest. So, yes, that's what we need to do. Remember these words. I'm going to come back to this. Okay, you guys, on that note, don't forget that we, um, our, what is Love is Blind will be coming up um, this weekend. And uh, y'all, have y'all watched the lady with the what the uh oh. who the f did I marry? Did y'all watch that? Do uh, we gonna review that? Heck no! I know you ain't gonna watch. I watched all no, the hours. Oh man, you that was no, it. no, that's baby, stupid, man. Baby, you need to give the the latest some information on what to do, what not to do. They ain't gonna listen to me. Y'all women don't like me like that. I try to give y'all advice. Y'all get so bitter towards me, and y'all don't listen. Okay. So the, the advice I do give y'all, it goes through one ear after the other ear. So I, I'm just going to be speaking to walls out there. How you know, man? You don't know how many people that you're ministering to. So when you do stuff like that, you minister well, to people. Well, the thing is, I'm, if I tell you about relationships, if I tell you about how things are out there on the dating scene, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be speaking from my experience. Exactly. Okay? Me too. And my experience is not good all the time. Trust me. So trust me. You know, I was out there doing my thing while I was younger, man. You so I know how gullible some women are. And y'all women got to y'all got to pay attention to your intuition. Y'all got to pay attention to your guts, man. You have to because if you don't, you're gonna be taken, okay? Then you're gonna be got. So yeah, man, I can I can preach all day long. All they got in their head, Ooh, I can't stand him. Ooh, he look like Martel. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, he have a cut and cut now. No, I do not cut her off. She cuts me off all the time. Okay, I'm done, man. But yeah, real talk. Red flags are called red flags for a reason. Pay attention to them. Well, that's the video for old girl right there. Five minutes. And there we go. I talk about it. If I don't talk about it on this platform, then I talk about it on the members only on Patreon. Uh, all she, right, I guys. think she's lying. Okay. On that, on that note, why? Because that lying yeah, man said she, she, she lying. Yeah. Okay, you didn't even watch it. <laughs> <laughs> a liar said, "Oh, she lying," and we supposed to believe him. Okay? How you know she ain't lying though? Well, how you know that he ain't lying about her I, lying? I, okay. they, they both could be lying, playing all of y'all. Could be, could be. All right, you guys. On that note, it's good entertainment. Try it's better than this married at first sight. Try to listen to it. I'm totally listen to it. Brush your teeth, listen to it. God, at least she got you sprung, don't she? No woman can ever get me sprung. Yeah, she On that you note, you guys, we go ahead and get out of here. Me. Don't forget to go with God and oh, let God go with you. Me. <laughs> Fall for God first. Deuce. What she got? Ain't no woman ever yeah. get me sprung. You came outside the garage. You listen to it. Come upstairs this morning. You listen to it. You on the tour to listen to it. It was seven, eight hours a whole shift. I had to. Hey. Let's put God first.